I thought we would take a break today from all of the socio-political nonsense going on in the populated world and talk about some issues and things that I have found down here in Antarctica. I've been asked to do this multiple times, so I thought, why not? The first thing that strikes me about this continent is if at one time it were habitable, it would have, of course, been the most strategic location to control on the planet. A lot of people have looked out here in the middle and they've reported about the anomalies and the pyramids and the stuff under the ice. I want to take a little bit of a different tack and look at it strategically. Now the first thing that we see, if you orient the globe this way, is when you zoom in on the ocean floor between it and Australia, you see these clear striations that would, if we were oriented properly, run north and south. That show me that it looks like, if, with the shape here and the shape there, that these two were tied together at one time in some way, shape, or form. I guess that would mean, to my mind, that we could perhaps find things in Australia that might correlate to things that were underneath the ice over here in Antarctica. It might give us an advantage. Also, when you look around this side of the continent, these over here look like fairly normal ice cavitation bays. However, this one down here and this one up here do not. It looks like these are taking the shape of things that were artificially hand of man or hand of something else made underneath the ice. Now, I know a lot of people don't think anything could exist underneath the ice. But if you've ever been in a cold environment for a long period of time, or taken your kids out and built an igloo and did it properly and sealed it properly, and you made one that could hold one or two or three or four, you realize how much heat an igloo can hold and how high the temperature can get inside an igloo. It can, I mean, it's not going to get Florida hot, but I mean, you can get it 40, 45, 50 degrees. You can get it livable. Now, given the vast resources of fresh water and the ability to generate and trap heat, especially down here if there were any type of geothermal events going on, you could very easily have under this thick sheet, some type of life. I don't doubt that that's possible at all. I mean, science is pretty much unanimous on the idea that if there is going to be life anywhere else, it's going to be found near fresh water. And this is, I think, we can all safely say the largest source of fresh water on the planet. It's frozen, so they don't call it water technically, but it would be if it were. Now, I want to contrast a couple of things to show that there might be already evidence for that other than the pyramids and everything else that's been reported that you can find just here on Google Earth. Now, down here, I use this as a control. Up here is the date slider. And this is, of course, the um, standard that'll show if something is real or not. What I've marked here, this is 2014, is this odd shape. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are going to say it's a cloud. Um, to me, it looks like the satellite is seeing it under the water. And you're saying, well, it could be ice. Well, that very well might be. Because, of course, when we go to 2015, it's gone. This is 12-30-2014. Uh, and 1230-2013, completely gone, but then shows up and then is gone again. Could have been a giant chunk of ice that floated by. Could have, It seemed odd in its shape if that were the case, but this isn't smoking gun. This isn't definitive, but let me show you something else. Now, if that's ice or if that's a cloud or if that's whatever, let me show you non-melting non-moving, non-shape-changing ice 
quote unquote ice from over here. Now, when you zoom in here, now we're still at 2014, you would look at this and go, oh, look, that's a chunk of ice. Look at that giant chunk of ice out there. Okay, now we are set at 2014. Here's 2015. Now our giant chunk of ice is under the water. 2016, it's still there under the water. Let's see if we can go forward farther. Nope, 16 is it. Okay, now look at this historically. This is 1230, 2016. 2015. 2014. 2013. 2012. 2011. 10. 2009. 8. 7. Every time you see the screen flash, that'll be another year. That's six, five, four, three, 2002. It doesn't change shape. It doesn't move. It's solid white. Don't tell me it's an island. And I'm already back to 1995 now, 94, 93, We're all the way back to 91, and this thing hasn't changed shape. You would think even an island down here would, over a period of 25 years, show something different. Anything different. You would see different levels of ice come and go on the island. You would see the imagery change somehow. But this is 1990, and I'm going to go forward through this. To present day, well, to 2016, I guess, quickly, and show you this thing doesn't change imagery or shape at all from 1990 to now. Other than strangely, in the last two years, seems like it goes further underwater. That's 14. So that's why I have it labeled with five question marks. This is uh, 66 degrees, 2340.71 south, 140 degrees, 0355.09 east elevation o feet of course i altitude 27000 feet once again that is 66 degrees 2342.89 south 140 140 degrees 0345.73 east Something that does not change at all over a quarter century in this region where, zoomed out, we'll go through this one more time um, just to show you all of the things around it that do change. That's 15, that's 16. As you can see, the clouds change. Ice floats by. I'm not sure what these striations in the atmosphere are. But as you can see, this is odd. This is this is an anomaly. Especially given we have once again a 90 degree angle here. So whatever this is, it's clearly not subject to the forces of nature, which I don't know very many things on this planet that aren't. Even buildings change. So we will leave that there. It's uh, 10 minutes.
So you guys let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe.